<laughs> Life is weird. <laughs> Life is so weird right now. I typically, like, I don't know, think about my content calendar, like, weeks in advance. And I never script my videos or anything, but I'll sit down with, like, a general idea on what the heck it is I want to talk about. Not today. I think I've been, I don't know, well, let's be honest. I've been avoiding this video for some time just because there's so much to say. There's so much to fill you in on. And I think I've struggled a lot with ensuring that I am still myself online and hopefully that to you also transcends as like me being my honest, authentic self. Authentic is such a buzzword. And I wanna maintain that, but I also don't want to overshare because I really think that there's a fine line and I don't wanna cross it. And as much as I project so much of myself onto the internet, there's also, you know, a little bit of privacy that probably should be maintained and just, you know, certain things don't have to be broadcasted. That's just my opinion. I also really haven't filmed much at all in the last few weeks, let alone the last few months. Um, if I'm being honest, I've done what has been the bare minimum for myself. And a lot of that is just because I've been trying to like protect my mental health in a way. And also like I've never felt this way before where it feels so difficult to turn on the camera. It's always been like natural, easy, let's go, mm, mm, get the work done. But right now it's just, it's a lot. And again, I feel like I also struggle with showing up as myself, even when I'm having a really bad day and not projecting like those negative feelings out into the world. Like you didn't come here to watch a negative video. I didn't come here to share one. We don't need to be recording that. No, there's so much to say. Ah! In case you haven't noticed, I am in new surroundings. I have moved not only to a new apartment, but to a new city and a new state. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna ask anyways, so I'm just gonna show you quickly the bedroom because otherwise I'm gonna forget. It's such a work in progress, like don't judge, okay? I'm just gonna show you because I love you, but don't judge. It's still messy. We've got our gorgeous new dresser over here that did take eight hours to assemble yesterday. We don't need to talk about it. Desk is probably the grossest part, a work in progress, but she's gorgeous, she's clean, she's sleek. Nightstands are definitely coming. For now, we've got some blank space baby over here left and right. Bookshelf will probably also be moved, but Again, a freaking work in progress. My mom put this here. It's a little bit embarrassing. I'm gonna meet new people here. I'm gonna have to tell them I'm a YouTuber. And then what? I'm trying to make friends and I have to tell people I YouTube. This is my gorgeous bathroom. My closet that definitely took me um, way too long to color coordinate and organize. And of course, last but not least, the main event, honestly, my bed. My beautiful, gorgeous bed with my beautiful, gorgeous sheets that just make me so beyond happy. I basically moved here with nothing. Like I had to buy a whole new bed frame, a whole new bed. I had zero sheets and that was kind of problematic because high quality sheets not only are essential in my life, like sleep is so important to me. I need a bed that is absolutely comfortable, but the problem is that high quality sheets are so expensive. Why are they so expensive? However, we have the sponsor of today's video to thank for these gorgeous sheets. Let me tell you about my BFF, Brooke Linen, all right? You wanna talk about quality? You wanna talk about comfort? Brooke Linen gives you the quality, the comfort, and the affordability that you need by cutting out the middleman, which is just so essential because they were founded on the philosophy that you should be able to get high quality, beautiful, delicious sheets, an absolute home essential without that disgusting luxury markup. It's true, it's disgusting. And because they're the absolute best ever, Brooklinen is offering my viewers $20 off any order of $100 or more. Just click the link below and use code Taylor W. Making this space just feel homey and beautiful, it's my form of, of self-care. And for me, I need my darn sleep. I refuse to sacrifice comfort when it comes to sleep. You spend a third of your life in your bed. You want this bed to be a safe zone. This is my self-care. Making my home as beautiful as it is is a form of self-care. Because when you sleep, you need to sleep well, okay? And these are like hotel quality sheets that don't cost you an arm and a leg and seven toes. For myself, I personally picked out Brooklinen's Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle. So instead of buying individual items, you can actually save 25% by purchasing a hardcore bundle, which includes the core sheet set extra pillowcases. I was actually so surprised and relieved to see extra pillowcases, chef's kisses, and a duvet cover. Like, all of that. 
All of that is included in the bundle. You can also choose to mix and match from over 20 different styles and patterns to fit you and your style. I kind of wanted like simplistic, but I also wanted like the crispness of a cream color in my bedroom. And the best part is you can do it all from the comfort of your home. You can shop for your Brooklyn and Classic or Luxe Hardcore Bundle right here on your bedroom floor. Pick out your favorite color, your favorite style, make it feel homey, make it feel like you, your own form of self-care. I had one of the best nights, the best nights of sleep in my Brooklyn and Sheets. Like literally, I am so hard to please. I am a sweaty sleeper. I'm a hot sleeper. I felt so at home and comfortable. It was like cloud nine all the time. Again, don't forget, you can get a special discount from Brooklinen of $20 on any order of $100 or more. Just click the link in my description box below. Use code TaylorW. I couldn't recommend them enough. I feel like they look freaking spectacular in my bedroom. Make me feel so cozy and comfy. Reese absolutely loves them. You're gonna love them and go shop Brooklinen, baby. If you've been keeping up with my content, you may or may not know that I just kind of went through like a big life change about three, four months ago. And ever since then, I've been kind of on this, what I like to call journey. Uh, I'm quitting it the summer I turned to Taylor because my best friend came up with that and it's cute as heck. But I've been on this journey all summer long of like trying to do things that I want to do for myself. I feel like for a very long time, I've always been codependent on other people, be that in relationships, friendships, family. Like I've always just listened to what other people, maybe like tell me what decisions I should make or even like something as simple as they like this TV show. So therefore I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I also like that TV show. I basically like had no idea who the heck I was on my own. And that was pretty freaking bad. But once, you know, like, crap hit the fan, I kind of decided I need to start doing things that help me remember who I am, basically. <laughs> and one of those big things for me was moving to a new place. I've always been somebody that's like, I have so much life to live. Where the heck can we explore? What city can we live in next? What part of the country can I move to? Like, I want to see it all. So I kind of decided, at least for this point in my life, like I was done with Washington and I wanted to figure out what the heck my next move was, quite literally. <laughs> so back at the beginning of July, I packed up all my things. I didn't know where the heck I was going to move to. So I actually put all of my things in a storage unit in Washington. I leave all of my things in Washington. My mom and I drive my car down, down to Southern California where my parents live. As much as I love and respect my parents who do watch my videos, I love you all, I just knew deep down I couldn't be at home, living at home during that point in my life. I knew I needed to figure my shit out just under my own roof or at least like without the influence of my parents. Thankfully, I have the world's greatest best friend. She invited me to stay at her apartment for basically like two and a half weeks while she was on vacation. So that's exactly what I did. I picked up the two suitcases I had with me and I drove them down to San Diego. And let me tell you, San Diego, she stole my heart. San Diego is such a special place. It was just like the perfect place that I needed to be in at that exact moment in time. It made so much sense that I almost thought this is where I need to move to. Like San Diego's kind of always been a question mark in my mind. It's been a place that I have so many connections in. Friends, family, it's like a 90 minute drive from my house. Like I could see my family so much more. I could be next door to my best friends. So many other friends from high school and college that I know there, like it made so much sense. And not to mention like I went there when I just needed a place to be happy in and be joyous in. So it's always gonna have that special place in my heart. But something that Alex and I have talked about extensively now is San Diego, in my eyes, is always going to be so special because it was the place I went to when I needed to heal. And it was healing for me but that doesn't mean it was the place for me to stay in. And I couldn't see that at the time. Like when I was making all these decisions and I'm like, where do I move? What do I do? All I kept thinking was, okay, San Diego, let's do it. It makes sense. But it wasn't like what my heart, wasn't what my heart was saying. <laughs> but I was getting those feelings confused because I was doing so much like good healing in San Diego. Healing sounds so cheesy, but like that's the exact word that describes exactly how my path was. Like just those two weeks that I was there, it was perfect. But of course, like I couldn't stay in her apartment for forever. Like it's hers. So when she got back home, we hung up for a bit and I left. 
I went back to my parents for a teeny bit. It was kind of like my home base in a way all summer long that I never really stayed in. And pretty much after that, I kind of like planned my summer as much as possible to be packed with as many fun activities as I could. One, because I feel like I needed it, like, and I wanted that time to explore and not feel held down by a lease necessarily. But also, too, I think I've realized in hindsight, I was doing it as a way to kind of, like, avoid the inevitable, to basically figure my shit out. <laughs> so after San Diego, I went to Washington, D.C. I had to do some um, help with my family there. I came back home for, like, two days. Then I left on, like, a little fun trip with two of my good friends to like the wine country in Northern California and we did a little trip to Lake Tahoe which I'd never fully explored before. So stinking fun. Not to mention stunning. We went swimming. Freezing freaking cold. I don't know why we thought that was a good idea. Even in August we were like oh. And then the last on my agenda was Salt Lake City which was a trip that I was taking with Alex. So Alex is the person whose apartment I was staying in in San Diego. Her family also has a house here. Her brother goes to school here and Salt Lake was a place in my mind that always like kind of I don't know it like sparked something I don't know what that was but interest was there and Alex and I we we had the best time of our lives like I attribute like that soul week to be like the climax of my story like we've got the, the main plot lines the rising action Utah Salt Lake that's my climax. <laughs> I don't even know how to like put it into words, but I just kind of felt like I came here and a lot of things made sense. And not only have I always been like drawn to a different type of nature than I grew up with because I was like palm trees and beach and here it's like gorgeous trees and mountains. It was also just like a different lifestyle pace and vibe and energy that I just felt very attracted to. But again, at this point in time, I am like San Diego on the mind. I'm telling everybody I know, all of my San Diego people, I'm like, guess what? New neighbor. I'm joining the Facebook groups. I'm trying to find roommates, housing, everything. Like dead set, I am a San Diego gal. And then I come home from Utah and I come home and I'm in the best mood. And I sit down with my parents and I'm just telling them about the trip. And my mom looks at me in the eyes and she's like, Taylor, the minute that you told me, okay. The minute that you told me that you were gonna go visit Salt Lake, I knew you were gonna come home and say, I wanna move there. And you know how moms just like, you know, they know you better than you know yourself. Like that was one of those moments where I'm like, when, when were you gonna tell me that? Like before or after, I had to realize it for myself, I guess. And literally the next day, I think I stood in the kitchen with my mom for about five hours, literally just going back and forth, basically between my head and my heart. What's the smart thing to do? What do I really want to do? And at the end of the conversation, I realized two things. The first is that I likely will not have this unique of an opportunity again in my life, like where I can pick up my entire life. I can take my job on the road with me and I can move literally anywhere that I want. And secondly, I can sit there and I can have this conversation with my mom, but at the end of the day, I have to remember what this summer was all about. And that is finding out what the heck Taylor wants to do. So yes, I did sit with my mom for a very freaking long time and she did tell me what she thought was best. And I did call multiple of my best friends asking for their advice. But at the end of the day, I had to do what the heck it was that I wanted to do. And ultimately I kind of just decided San Diego's always gonna be there. And if that is truly a place that is where I'm meant to be, then I'll find my place there down the line. But right now, this is some place I've always wondered about. I've always thought about what life could be like in Salt Lake. And when can I do this again? Let's fuck do the scary thing. <laughs> Trying to listen to my heart as much as possible, but also like respecting the heck out of my friends and my family who are giving me advice and whatnot. One of the best pieces of advice I received from one of my very good friends who has done multiple moves on her own across the country. She's lived in Baltimore, she's lived in North Carolina, she moved to Oregon all by herself, like not having a close social network. And that was one of the major things that was scaring me about moving here was, okay, San Diego has all these people that I know, but Salt Lake has like Four. <laughs> so I kind of just wanted to like pick her brain and I'm like, tell me, like, how did you do this so confidently? And how did you meet all these people and, and everything? And one of the best things that she told me was you have to be at peace with knowing you will never know what the other option will bring you. Like you will never ever know what life would be like if you did a full year in San Diego. You'll just never know. And yeah, that kind of sucks if you think about it, but at the same time, you can't live your life just always envisioning what the other avenue could have brought you. Because 
at the end of the day, you didn't choose it. All of that to say, I went with my gut. I did what I think is the scarier thing. And I moved to Salt Lake. Salt Lake City, baby! I moved here knowing like quite literally like three or four people. I found the most incredible roommate. I absolutely love my apartment. I just moved here. Like this is happening in real time, I promise you. And I'm just basically gonna give it a freaking go. If I hate it and I absolutely hate my life, then I'll move back home. Like you can always break a lease. You can always leave. You can always go to your San Diego, but why the heck not try out something new and different and scary? And to be honest with you, yeah, like there's been some hard moments, but I have never doubted that this is exactly where I'm meant to be right now. There are too many things that I feel like are happening that just make so much sense and they're just falling into place so beautifully that I couldn't ever question this decision. And that's not to say like you should watch this video and like pick up your life and move to some random city where you know no one. Cause in general, like that's not a good idea. But I feel like, again, on theme here, like the summer I turned Taylor, I had to do the shit that I've always said I wanted to do. And I'll never regret like giving this a try and doing something that's uncomfortable and out of my comfort zone because San Diego was my safe option. I would have probably grown there, but not nearly as much as I will grow here. And hopefully like independently or alongside like some new kick-ass friends. Like I said, I literally just moved here like days ago. My room is still like kind of in shambles. Maybe, maybe a house tour is in the future. Probably not because I just get self-conscious with those. Like I am no Marie Kondo. I don't know how to decorate very well. Like I do my best, okay? I'm just trying to also like re-envision a space where I used to have like two bedroom, two bath, kind of like to myself in a way, or at least like to decorate in the way that I wanted. And I essentially downsized all of my things to one bedroom, you know? It's been a lot. Like there are so many changes that have happened for me this summer. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm energetic and happy right now and I truly feel like I'm in a good place, but the reason it's been so freaking hard to film and turn on my camera and to just make content in general is because this summer has also kicked my freaking butt. Kind of in the best way, but also like in so many hard ways. And I'm never gonna be the one to turn on my camera like when I'm crying. But if you just need to remember that like YouTube is fake and Instagram is fake, remember that I've had the highest of highs and the freaking lowest and lowest of lows all summer long. But I'm never the type of person to sit and dwell on that. And that's so much freaking easier said than done. But for me, like I just have to keep moving or else I'm gonna fall off my like metaphorical bicycle or whatever, like if I don't keep pedaling. And environment has always been huge for me. Like I've always been somebody that is crazy about my natural light. Like how many times did I complain about my last apartment when there was just no freaking light whatsoever? So I think being in a new space mentally and quite literally physically in this apartment, in the city, in this state will do wonders for me and i'm i'm excited to see what these next few months will bring i feel like i moved here what i think is a great time to be here um there's so many exciting things happening so many exciting like things to do i've literally hiked like every single day that i've been here all i want to do is be outside and explore and like see new things and try new restaurants and bars and whatever so if you're in the area you want to hang out you hit me up, you let me know. I don't even know how to like put this into phrasing that will emphasize how sincerely grateful I am, but know that your support and your loyalty and like sincere messages that you have sent me during this time has meant more to me than I will ever know how to put into words properly. I basically had to learn how to be okay with being by myself and like doing things on my own and, and being alone and alone with my thoughts. And I don't know if I would have been able to do that without your support and um, I'm just like incredibly, incredibly grateful. I apologize that my frequency of videos is like in the absolute dumpster. I've been so bad about replying to comments and DMs, but know that I have read them and I'm trying to get to that headspace again where I feel 
more comfortable being myself and sharing as much content as possible. I want to get back into vlogging. I feel like there's so many freaking cool things to share here. And now that I'm in this new space, I feel like my creativity, uh, she's going to be flowing. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you just like doesn't seem to to really suffice, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wouldn't even have the opportunity to have this new adventure if it wasn't for you all supporting me and my channel and allowing me the, the chance to work remotely and do what I do and love what I do. Like this is it's the coolest thing. It's the absolute coolest thing. There's probably a lot more that I need to say, but at this point I feel like I've just been rambling for 20 minutes, but thanks for looking out for me. I'm looking out for you too. If you have any like Salt Lake Rex, throw them in the comments below. I'm on my way to get my first Sodi. I think I need to record that that experience. I've never had a Sodi before. I don't even like soda, but we're doing it for the memes. We love you all. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you for your patience. You're the best. Reese loves you. Peace. Ah.